Um, thank you very much for um, inviting me here to speak. Um, unlike most of you in the room, I am not um, an Apple developer and I spend very little time on the platform. Though I have had an Apple Mac and I do have Apple products, um, but I'm a, a Linux person. So thank you for inviting me to hear this. So who am I? Uh, my name is Amy Marie Forsham. I'm a software engineer and educational researcher, and I'm also a technomancer because I think that probably best describes what I do in technology. There are my contact details there. I've worked in the field of technology since 2000. Um, I have a long list in, of work that I've contributed to in open source, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, as I stated, I'm an educational researcher. I started educational research at the Southern Cross University back in 2008 and been involved in various um, academic and also uh, non-academic uh, research projects. Um, I've been in projects at um, SCU that was involved particularly around young girls in IT um, and helping them to change the perception of programming and also currently working with Adelaide uh, University on a research project to assist youth on the autistic spectrum into IT entrepreneurship. So that's a little bit about um, why you should listen to me and I'm not just standing up here and... and <laughs> um, so here we go. Why am I here? Well, I like to think that everything great in life starts with a story. And in 2014, I was based in Seattle, Washington, USA, and an Aussie male friend of mine, and I like to point that out, um, so an Australian male friend of mine retweeted a tweet from Ask Virginia saying, we're looking for mentors for a project mentoring kids. So I responded, well, I can help. And there started my journey to working with one of the most innovative projects I think I've come across uh, for young girls in programming. So the history. So App Camp for Girls was founded by Jean McDonald, and it was founded in Portland, Oregon. And it was really started because as a long-time Apple developer, she was kind of noticing at WWDC events that there wasn't many women there. And she was really thinking, how can we help this out? So she was thinking of ways to increase the participation and kind of feed into that pipeline. But she really didn't want to just teach code. Um, and I think that's the key difference for this program, is a lot of programs I've been in, it's about teaching code, um, but this program is not. What she really wanted to do was immerse them in the whole software development process. And it was really about trying to inspire them on to further education. So the mission of App Camp for Girls is quite simple. To empower girls by providing engaging and accessible education programs in software development. The vision, well, as we stated before, she really wanted to see an increase of women at WWDC events. So her vision is really around gender, gender equality in the software development profession, which I think um, we all know has a little bit of an issue. So what is it really about? It's really about diversity. Um, it's really about getting out there and increasing the number of women. Now, women only need apply. So App Camp for Girls inspires an interest in software development through hands-on experience in app creation led by role models from the industry. And this is very, 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 very important that every single body at this camp who is mentoring, who writes the curriculum, who puts this all together, are people who self-identify as female. And this is very, very important for us. So there is no males at any of the camps. Um, men are not allowed to apply. It is really only a women's only event. Well, and I'm missing one slide there that said, but men can actually help. Um, and you help by getting the word out, right? So as I said, the reason I got involved in this project is because a male friend of mine based in Australia retweeted Virginia's tweet that was in Seattle, and I just happened to be there. So that's how these things happen. So how can men help? They can help by spreading the word about these programs. They can help by looking at uh, knowing other women um, and going, oh, you might be interested in supporting this project. They can also help with sponsorship. Um, the camp takes App Camp for Girls is, is a full non-for-profit. So there's also sponsorship that can help there as well. So role models is the DNA. And that's another key part of it, because I know myself, when I first started in IT, I really didn't know that many other women in IT. Um, and as I said, that was back in, in 2000. When I first started studying in the late 90s, there was five of us in the classroom. Um, and this number dwindled and dwindled until there was one of me left. And that was as I got higher up the chain. 
Um, when I first started working in IT, I worked with about maybe seven or eight women out of around a group of about 35. The higher I got up the chain, and the higher I keep getting up the chain, the less women that I have at my role. Um, and I keep on looking up, and it's very, very hard for you to see them. Um, and I just want to, like, I guess, take a bit of a, my own personal story here. When I was a younger child growing up, I grew up in Mount Druitt, uh, New South Wales, which is just outside of Sydney. It's been on SBS recently. You might have seen it. Um, one of my best girlfriends, Leah Matthews. Uh, Leah Matthews was Indigenous. One day we were sitting there watching TV, and she said to me, See, Amy, what kind of a future do I have? No one on the TV looks like me. And it dawned upon me very, very deeply that day that this is a very serious thing. Because if we don't see people that look like us doing the roles that we want to do, then we think that we can't be doing these roles. And this goes across every industry and it goes across every single group of people. So the key ingredient to App Camp for Girls is to provide role models for these girls is to show them that actually, yes, they can do this, and there's a lot of other women doing this. And not only that, but these women come from a very, very diverse background as well. So it's not just developers, it's not just um, women that fit this particular role or grew up in this particular area. What they really do is try and get the diversity through the mentors. So as I said, it is a real big key ingredient. Now all the attendees are young girls and they're generally about 12 to 14. That's also um, really important as well because some of the research that I was doing with SCU, what we tried to do was start at a later stage and we started to uh, get them in around about year 10, year 11. But by that time, they've actually already made some fundamental choices on what uh, courses or careers they're going to be going into. So it's really hard to interject into somebody there and go, well, actually, even though you've picked these subjects, maybe you should think about these subjects. Um, you drop that back a couple of years, and we found that we had a lot more success because they hadn't actually made those fundamental choices of what they're doing in the senior parts of their study. And as I said before, it's presenting role models from different backgrounds as well. Now, by having all women there, why is this important? Because we get to address the aggression that somebody has already raised to me today at this conference. Why do we need a girls-only camp? Why can't we have boys-only camps as well? Well, to give you an idea, when we raised this question in Seattle, I had one girl there who had been recently at a camp. She was one girl out of 100 boys. That's why we need an app camp for girls. Some of the other girls who had attended camps might have been about five or so out of the same numbers. Others there were too afraid to attend camps because they didn't want to be singled out and they didn't really think it was a place for them. When we did the research at SEU, we would ask them before, uh, we would give them a survey beforehand and we would say to them, what do you think programming is? Do you think it's something that women can do? Now I was shocked. Because when I grew up in the 80s, there was a lot more female programmers. And I had role models that I looked up to who were actually programmers. So I never thought that it was something I couldn't do because of my gender. But these young girls were telling us that it's a boys only role. That girls aren't good at programming and girls aren't good at maths. And I'm not saying this. These are actual things that I saw. Um, and this is what's kept me going in this kind of work. So by addressing that question, we get to address a very fundamental question that I feel as well. And that is that we teach that the best way we can support women in technology as women is to support each other. We teach that it's very important for all of us to be friends and to promote other women in tech, to not rely on other people to promote us, but to promote ourselves and our friends. And we teach them to be friends and to feel confident to talk about the issues that they face with each other. As I said before, can men still help? Yes, they can. Um, and as I, the best way is, like my friend did, he just all he had to do was retweet, and he retweeted, and I was there. And it was actually pretty um, good because they were struggling to find a team 
project coordinator. They had two that they needed to have another one. So it was perfect fit for them. So we will get to technology soon. <laughs> so there is a curriculum approach that's quite different as well. And this was another fundamental um, thing for me and why I find this is really, really innovative. So it's a one-week camp. Now we do this in school holidays. It goes from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. So it's kind of like a school day. Um, it's not just about teaching coding. It's about teaching creative thinking. So it's about the design as much as it's about the code. So we take the students not just through coding, but we take them through UI design, we take them through marketing, we teach them presentation skills, and most of all, as I said, we teach them that creative thinking. How do we come up with, um, as a great talk here earlier on where the gentleman showed the funnel, and that's it, how do we take that idea that we have and see if it's viable, and then what does that mean in its implementation? Now, at the end of the week, what the girls will do is they'll create an app and each team will pitch to a table of uh, VCs. Now, these aren't real VCs, but we generally go out and we'll pick women within uh, very high role uh, women, so directors, etc., within the industry and get them to kind of act as that VC. So the students actually get up to have that experience of pitching to a room full of people and to VCs. And a big thing that we do is we also include outdoor activities. So it's not just about the infotech workshops, but we also do things like a yoga workshop, we do hula hooping, we do games outside, um, we don't just sit in a room. And we also teach them that it's actually very healthy uh, as technologists to not just always sit in a room. So why is it different? Because as I said before, it's about teaching students about app building. It's enabling all the students to participate. So we have a group of four. Everybody has to participate in everything that we do. By the end of that, in the last uh, day, they've kind of had an exp exposure and experience across all of them. Some will naturally go, you know what, I just really want to code this bit and make this extra little bit. And someone else might go, well, I'm going to make the presentation look better. Or actually, I want to work on the UI design. So by taking them all through that process, they get to have a little bit of everything and it helps them kind of work out what area they might actually like to explore further. Um, as I said with the outdoor activities, that also enables social activities, which you kind of see then, you know, and these are girls from, some might know each other, but most don't, haven't known each other and they're from all schools around the area. So it actually enables them to meet other women that are also um, interested in technology and to form those friendships. And I think the biggest thing, as I keep on saying, but it is so important, is the introduction of positive role models. And it's not just the mentors. So we have mentors, but the mentors are kind of like a project manager, if you think, for the group. What we actually do is we get experts in the field to come in and to talk about their particular thing. So we might, we'll get an iOS developer to come in and talk about the code aspect. We'll get a UI designer to come in and talk about that. We'll get a PR person to come in and talk about the marketing. We'll get a professional speaker to come in and talk about what presentation skills are and how you publicly speak and things like that. These are all women and they all come from very diverse backgrounds. Now, this is really great, I think, because feedback is really, really important. Um, and we're all at a conference here, so we know that feedback, uh, if we provide it, can change the way the conference runs if we don't like it. Um, so we seek feedback a lot. And I love these statements. My daughter had a terrific time and was so inspired. Your camp has solidified her interest in a career as a computer programmer. It's a fun camp where you get to learn so much, meet amazing people, and build friendship and confidence. And if out of this camp, if we get a child, and not every child is going to come out of it and go, I'm definitely going to be a computer programmer. Um, but what we're actually doing is helping them build confidence. And that's a really important thing for any youth, is to have that confidence there. Now for the tech. Now you see that I've got some interesting pictures here, because it's not just um, code. So there you've got some laptops. We've got printers, there's scanners, there's um, our little iPhone template, UI templates, we've got paper and pens, and we've got a badge maker as well. So we don't just focus on um, 
you know, the computer side of technology, but we bring in other areas of that as well. So the technology stack. So each team will have one um, Apple Mac Pro, and the reason that we have one for the four students is to get everybody to have a go, and we also teach them about pair programming within that as well, which I think is another fundamental thing when you're learning programming. Um, sorry. Uh, each attendee will have their own iPod Touch. So they get an iPod Touch that they can, these have all been do, um, donated to us as well. So they have an iPod Touch and they're allowed to take that home, which enables them to run their application on that device, take it home, show their parents, show their friends. Um, now the first camps were done obviously in Objective-C, and Swift wasn't around at the time. Um, but we also, we encourage teams, they can use artwork online. And we do a little bit of a talk around Creative Commons and how you can't just take a photo down from the web and stick it in your app and then there's all the rules on the Apple Store about what you can and can't do as well. So we go through that with them as well. So that, that way we kind of encourage them more to do artwork. One, it breaks them away from just being on the computer. It gets them to actually add that personal touch to their own app. And we show them how you can draw that, do that drawing. We can scan it in or you can find something we can print it out etc and you know it's not it, it doesn't and not everything has to be created on a screen um, they must sketch up their UI designs and they have to sketch up their layouts because as we all know um, sketching when we are designing an app is a very very important part of it and each team is part of the marketing so they have to pick a, a team name which is their brand right and they have to think about it as their brand so what we do is we get them to design a logo for their brand, and then they have to make two badges. And these are all generally hand-drawn because the kids get really excited, right? They get to draw their own brand. Um, and they'll do two little badge designs, and then they get to kind of use the old, you know, badge hand press to make their badges. And they get to give their badges to the other teams and then also to the VCs as well as a way of, you know, learning how to market. So the code, um, look, I'm showing you actual code, but basically oh, I got an automatic shutdown on your RMIT system in 172 seconds, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, thank you. <laughs> I just didn't want to touch anything, break it. Um, so calculator, uh, first of all, the first camps were run with a calculator, it was a pretty basic calculator app, um, and then they've moved into a quiz game app. Now, a template was used because obviously we're talking about one week. So you really have, and we're not just doing code. So it meant that about 60% of that code is already written in the template. And what the attendees are doing is they're writing the connecting bits. So they're actually connecting up all the buttons, they're connecting in the UIs, and they're adding in, it's a quiz template. So the quiz template can be anything. My team did a personality quiz where you went through a bunch of series, it asked you what music you liked, what your food tent taste was, and then it came out the end of, you know, if you're an emo or sporty or a posh or... And it was each of the girls' kind of own personality that they put into it. Um, but th there was another team, for example, that um, there was two girls in there who had done um, some app camp stuff before, not this particular app camp but others, and they were a little bit more involved on the programming. So when they got to the end of the week, they spent that extra time to take it further, to add in an extra exit button, put some music in it, and do those extra little things. So there is that there for them to be able to do. Um, but for those who don't want to take it further in the code, they can spend that extra time if they want, making it look nicer on the designs, on the marketing, etc. Um, and my team spent it on polishing up their presentation skills, and then also getting their own little bits of kind of um, artwork and their own little touches into it. Now, growing the technology stack. So this is also um, a really, really big part of it as well. So obviously, as I said, the first camps did develop um, a basic calculator and then it expanded to a more complex uh, game quiz. Now, the future expansion, there was a um, project that was launched this year, a donation project, and I'm uh, happy to see that the goal was met. And so what that's going to enable is further curriculum work to actually get some more complex games in there so we can add a little bit more challenging 
um, app, apps and that around it. And of course, with everything moving into the smartwatch um, phase, what um, App Camp for Girls really wants to do next is look at getting some Apple Watches and then actually getting Apple Watch apps into the curriculum. So then you can also approach the idea of, okay, how, what is the difference between making an app for a phone as to a watch? How do you connect an app on the watch to the phone? And kind of getting them to really think about the more IOP world that we seem to be moving into. So my pictures come out a bit... They look good there. They look a bit squashed on this one here. <laughs> um, so this is the uh, Seattle camp in 2014. And this was um, the group of us mentors. Not all of the people who spoke. There were some people there who spoke. But it's a, it's a pretty good representation. Now, I was uh, lucky enough to be in Seattle last Tuesday night and caught up with, with um, Liz and Virginia from the camp and have a chat to them about what happened this year. So this year they had another camp that was run. It was very successful. It's the second camp that's run in Seattle, um, and it's going to be an annual event. Um, I'm very, very proud to say that the three students from the prior year returned as intern mentors. And that's really, really positive as well. Because it means that not only did they get to go and be a part of that on the attendee side, but they can now come back in and get brought into how we ran things behind the scenes and what it means to actually mentor somebody as well. And I'm very, very proud to say that uh, there was two students from my team uh, that went on to be interns, which was great because it's, we, we had, well, there was at least one of, one of the interns I, I really kind of was like, I'm not, you know, she's enjoying this, but I don't know if she's going to really get into, into the programming side of it, but she's really jumped right into it. Now, the big important thing that has happened this year, as you can imagine, SWIFT has been introduced. So Objective-C is no longer there, and SWIFT is there. So they're teaching them on um, the newer language. But this has also enabled the students to see a very um, important part of programming. Uh, if we all think of the language that we first started writing, um, I still write the language I first started writing in. Do I? Not really, no. I started writing, I still write the first language that I wrote as a professional, um, which was Perl, but I don't do it that much anymore, but I still do it. But as a kid, I started in basic. I still don't write that though, right? <laughs> but it taught me the fundamentals and the principles of programming. And this is very, very important, I think, because we live in a world now that's so abstracted when we work in technology. Um, back in the day when a lot of us in the room were learning how to do it, we were really on, in that command line, we were really at the lower levels of that technology stack. And you could still easily, much, quite easily jump into assembly, which wasn't as tricky as it is today. Um, but these days, kids are introduced to technology through a phone, through a watch, through something that's sitting very high layers up. So... You know, they get stuck. I've seen a lot of kids get into this mentality when I teach of, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm learning JavaScript and everything has to be in JavaScript and I can't possibly learn another language because the principles of what I've learned do not apply. Um, and I've had, you know, kids say to me, but Miss, the pointy number thing, I need to learn objective, uh, I need to learn C sharp because I can't use the pointy number thing in JavaScript. And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, come back now. We have to do the principles of programming again. Um, and that's also the problem of where we have... So in the project that I've been working with this year, what we did is get the kids into Khan Academy. Khan Academy is great, but it's so abstracted that they're not learning the principles of programming. So, and that is where, you know, when this kid said that to me, I've gone, hang on a minute. I, like, I knew what he meant by the pointy number, but he didn't even know what the pointy number is. Um, and then I looked around the classroom and I said, well, can, let's talk about variables. What's the difference between a string and an in? Let's talk about loops. Let's talk, and this is the thing, and these students were kind of like, but every single one of these students had created a JavaScript app. It created a little game. So to them, they didn't need to, they were fine. They were just kept, in, kept on going. It didn't, wasn't important until we took them out of Khan Academy and put them into Unity 
that they started, we started realising, oh my God, this is not the best approach because we've lost all that. Um, so I think with having SWIFT introduced, last year we gave them a book that was Objective C. And following on from the jokes last night, you know, the books are out of date already. Um, and this is the problem we have in technology, right? But the kids got to see that even though Objective C wasn't being used, even though certain things, aspects have changed, the fundamentals that they learn still applied in the new language. And I think that's very important. And it gets to teach them, well, don't worry, in five years' time, there's going to be another language that you're going to be learning. And there might be actually three languages that you might be learning. And that's fine, because if you understand the principles of programming, then you're a software engineer. You can jump into doing these other languages. It doesn't need to be a barrier to you. So I, I thought that was really, really great. So what does the future hold for App Camp for Girls? Well, they really plan to grow it. So as I said, it started with Jean having this crazy idea that she wanted to increase more women at WWDC. And there is a really positive story about that because there are scholarship programs that have just been, now I'm not a WWDC attender, so I'm just going to say what I know, that there are scholarship programs now, and out of those scholarships programs, a large number of those scholarship programs um, have been helped through App Camp for Girls, and a large number of mentors, et cetera, have gone through to go on to that, so that's fantastic. Um, but App Camp for Girls, as I said, is growing. And this year, there's been three camp locations across North America. So Portland, Seattle, and then Vancouver in Canada. They are looking at expanding and getting that out to further locations. So that was the whole point of the fundraiser as well. Because as we know, we can't just drive everything off volunteer base. So that also enables to have a person doing curriculum development and also an executive director to help kind of organise everything. So the current goal is to establish four new locations across the next year or two. So that will be seven in total. Now this is a project that's purely North American based. And this is part of one of the reasons that I really wanted to come to talk to you people about this. Because I'm not that close with the Apple community in Australia. But I would really love to see a program like this being run in Australia. Uh, I don't know who I need to talk to. <laughs> Maybe people can help me. <laughs> um, but I really think that this would be a really positive thing. And, and it's really fun, and it's great. And as I said, it, it took the kids through a way of, okay, here's a concept, here's how we design it up, and here's how we create it. But it's not just how we create it, um, it's actually coming up with that app at the end of the day that they can take around to their parents, they can take also to other friends. And the one thing that we have done as well is... The, out of all the camps that are run with the quiz game, those games are being put into like a Compedium app. So you can get the app. Uh, it's 99 cents. It's on, uh, on the iTunes store. And that's basically all the kids work there and you can run through the little quiz games. So that's one way that you can really add to support. Uh, donating to the project. So App Camp for Girls has a website, and there is a contribute page there, and you can add donations. The other thing that they um, really look at is sponsoring camps. So the prizes and that will actually come from local companies. So most of them are local, obviously, Apple-based companies, um, and they will sponsor each group. So each group will have a sponsor. And what that enables us to do as well is to talk to them a lot about VC funding and about having that sponsorship um, and about how, okay, we can sit there in our garage and code for a week and try and create something if we can get some kind of sponsorship, be it through an Indiegogo or some other person that wants to help out, then, you know, we might be able to get some more technology to assist us with doing this work. Um, and if, you, if anybody wants to talk about how we can actually get one to run in Australia, um, I've got some ideas, but I think that would be really good. 
Um, the other thing I'd really like to see is, is the curriculum itself actually utilise more, because that's really what we don't do in Australia, is we don't have a lot of those type of curriculums. We do have a lot of after school projects and programs to teach kids um, how to write code, but not really take them through that full app building. Um, the project that I'm involved in with Adelaide University is a research project, and what we've done at the end of this is through the Australian Qualifications Framework, we've developed an um, advanced certificate in entrepreneurship. This is the first certificate in Australia for entrepreneurship, which is quite funny for a country, a small country, that has so much of its money in small to medium business. And we didn't actually have one at the TAFE level. So we've got this coming in next year at the TAFE level. And this will take children through, or anybody, sorry, through, um, that course and actually teach them all about creative thinking, how do we come up with ideas, how do we build them out, and what does that all mean and look like. So I guess I want to end it by, um, so this is, you've got Michelle on your left, um, and then Jean on your right. And Jean, as I said, is the founder of this, and Michelle is um, a very, very key part of it as well. So these two lovely, lovely ladies are awesome ladies, and Jean is very, very amazing. Um, both long-time Apple developers um, have set this great idea up, and I just think it's fantastic. And I'm completely and utterly always inspired by her. So I have to um, add the credits. So the App Camp for Girls logo and photos and quotes are uh, copyright by App Camp for Girls. And they're a non-for-profit corporation in the state of Oregon. Um, that is the website. Go on, check it out. If you know of anybody in the states yourself that might want to get involved in this, please share that. Um, if you have a spare five or ten dollars, please throw it in because it'll definitely help. And I think I'm kind of getting close to time, so thank you very much.